Hey there guys and welcome to FP1 and today we got greeted with our first ever car launch of the 2020 Formula 1 season in the Haas F1 team and I must say I'm pleasantly surprised. So the Haas cars, I guess liveries of the past have always been a little bit mundane, a little bit boring and especially the digital renders we get out first are usually quite lacking in new features but this year we've had quite a lot um, Quite a, lot, quite a lot of differences in comparison to the 2019 Haas car. I guess we are expecting from Haas today, this this year quite a big change in, their, in design ideology, given how difficult their 2019 Challenger was and how hard it was for them to turn those tyres on when it mattered in the race. So I guess coming into this, we should have expected something new, but, well, I'm really quite intrigued by this car, let's say. We're going to go through some of the key features now. Uh, and just use a bit of my aerodynamic knowledge to just explain what everything's trying to do. But yeah, let's get straight into it. So starting with the front wing, the first probably most noticeable thing is that front nose cone. And we can see that Haas have kind of adopted an ideology that we've seen McLaren and Alfa Romeo uh, adopt in the past. And that's basically taking, you having like a nostril design, I think it's the best way to describe it really. Uh, in, in, along with just that normal thumb nose, which we're so used to seeing on these uh, 2018, 2019 and now 2020 cars. Though, so the whole point of this really is to suck air into what I imagine is some form of S-duct, which for those that don't know is basically like an S-shaped tube, uh, S -shaped tube in the uh, nose cone of the car, and it spits out the um, just ahead of where the driver sits, and it just allows for the flow to be nice and uniform and smooth as it goes over the body in the cockpit of the car. So that's probably what that's there for. I wouldn't be surprised if there's also a... Uh, little intake on the underside of that nose cone as well obviously from these images we can't see that but it's something that we've seen quite a lot especially in the 2010s and possibly even before that so it's something that's going to carry on to the 2020s a very very useful um, aerodynamic feature on these Formula 1 cars but yeah it's, it's quite interesting to see this design kind of filter through the teams now I think it was just McLaren that tried it in 2018 uh, and then we had I guess almost a variant in the Force India cars back from 2016 but that was slightly different um, then I think Alpha picked it up last year uh, with his nostril design and now has to take it as well. It'll be interesting to see whether Alpha keep their nostril design. Now I've heard in the media that they're thinking of changing their design quite a bit in comparison to previous years. So we'll have to wait and see. But a interesting step forward in that nose cone of the Haas. Moving to the actual front wing itself then and two things to make note of here. Firstly, there is a far, almost first instances of a Ferrari copy in that they've gone for this almost low sweeping uh, front wing element that in fairness Ferrari started with but I think also Alpha used it last year and by the end of the year there were a few other teams that were kind of going for this low end play and this, this is just to get air around the outside of the tyres given the 2019 rule shake up we, we lost all those canards and uh, little curves and nice little aerodynamic flicks at the front of the front wing uh, so basically this is to almost counteract that and to still try and move that air outboard of the tyres and get it away from that surface as much as possible. Uh, also adding to that is the end plate itself and we've got a little bit of a cutout on the end plate you can just about see in some of these images. Uh, again we saw I think Mercedes and Red Bull trial this quite a lot and trial a lot of different designs last year. So again quite interesting to see Haas doing it for the first time. I went through a few images of their 2019 car at Abu Dhabi and by the looks of things their end plates are relatively just rectangular there's no sort of cutout at all. So we can see there's also even some sort of cast injection here and some sort of research going into this end plate. Whether this is what we're going to see in testing and the first race at Melbourne, that remains to be seen. But I can see them experimenting with this. It also, it because it, it, it's at the front end of the car, they can experiment with it quite a lot uh, and, and, and see, you know, whether they can make any improvements to it fairly easily. So... Yeah, definitely interesting to see though. Let's move slightly further back now. So the barge board designs are quite difficult to see and that's partly down to the livery, which does look amazing. It does take, kind of take me back to the uh, Honda, Honda days back in 2006, 2005, that sort of era. That red, white and black, amazing. I'm really, really happy with that. Downside of that, obviously though, is it makes things a little bit harder to see, especially in that large black area, sort of where those barge boards are. Now, from what I can gather, it looks... Again, kind of like a McLaren innovation. They had like these boomerang wings uh, for the majority of last year. And it looks like they've included that on this uh, 2020 Challenger for Haas as well. Quite difficult to see, but obviously McLaren had a very good season. So it makes sense for them to kind of take uh, notes out of other teams' books. But whether it will work for this type of car, we'll, well, we'll see. I can see quite a lot of McLaren kind of elements coming in here. Obviously with the nose guns I talked about earlier. 
and then now also these uh, barge boards. So be interesting to see what McLaren do this year and see whether there's any major changes to their design. I'm imagining there to be. I think, again, they're another team that have talked about quite a big step up going into 2020. Moving slightly further back, then, we can see we've got a new type of T-wing. So, obviously, these sort of came back over last year. Now, we've got no more shark fins. So, they're a little bit lower down. I guess, slightly more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, again, these are just kind of to help direct air towards the rear end of the car, especially that rear wing uh, and some of the elements on the rear wing uh, end plates. But this one, we kind of got back to that coat hanger design we saw trial quite a lot through 2017. Wasn't quite there as much in the 2018-2019 season. We kind of just saw like these one element T-wings, but this two element is uh, back now and by the looks of things here to stay. So that will be uh, that'll be interesting to see whether that works or whether, they, again, it could be something they trial quite a lot in testing, bringing different types of T-wings out and seeing whether some perform better than others. But again, obviously, like I said, quite a lot has changed. The rear packaging of the car itself, it's the same Ferrari engine. It does look quite aggressive, though. And we were almost imagining this. And the floor as well. Lots of nice cutouts on the floor. Uh, and that part, especially this year, creating quite a lot of downforce. So it makes sense for it to be quite a complicated piece of kit. And it does a, appear to be. So lots and lots of design innovations in that house car today. So the last thing I do want to talk about then is looking at the rear wing of the car. And more importantly, the cutouts. Because the... Um, M plate geometry is fairly similar, in, in, at least in regards to the uh, end of last year. Uh, but the actual cutouts they have at the end to help improve the flow at the rear of the car have changed quite drastically. So I'll put an image on the screen now that will be of the 2019 car at Abu Dhabi. And you can very clearly see that these like horizontal sort of just cutouts as you go as, as you go further along the, uh, the end plate. They've been replaced this year by a lot more um, curved ones, which... I imagine we'll have some form of aerodynamic benefit in comparison to the uh, 2019 adaption, but um, they you can kind of see that those vertical cutouts towards the bottom of the end plate, but they're a lot smaller and they've been the ones up near the near the top have been replaced obviously by these more curvy ones. So we'll see if that works. And again, testing is going to be very very important as obviously we're going to be seeing teams change these designs quite a lot. Obviously these digital renders are very rarely what the cars will actually look like from an aerodynamic standpoint. But it is quite interesting to see, as I said, quite a lot of change as we go uh, into the, uh, well, as we go into the 2020 season. Like I said, Haas, a team we expected to have quite a few drastic changes to their car and they have delivered on that. So just a few conclusions then. So like I said, massive redesign, um, especially looking at those tyre issues that we had in 2019. I think this was definitely needed and I guess should have been expected as well. Uh, but it looks very promising. They've taken quite a lot of elements from Ferrari and from McLaren. So we'll see whether they work for them on track. Like I said, it worked for those teams for the majority of last season. So, hey, they might work. But then again, we could be seeing that those teams have made another step forward. So that remains to be seen. The one thing that does worry me, though, and it's not something that a lot of people would really maybe pick out straight away, but it's the lack of sponsors. There's only really four or five different sponsors on there. Obviously, Jack and Jones having quite a big prominence on the car. I guess maybe Peak as well, looking at the rear wing. But other than that, it's fairly you know it's very bland it's a lot of it is just has its own brands there's cnc machines and obviously you know their logo pasted across the car so it does worry me where the money is going to come in this year and hopefully we can see them pick up a few more sponsors as we go through the uh through the 2020 season obviously they had that absolute horror show with rich energy last year which said i imagine keen to uh, not repeat but i do have a feeling that might have turned a few sponsors away and it does make me wonder and worry a little bit about the future of this team if they cannot get the funding because Gene Haas is he's there to make a profit at the end of the day and if he can't make that profit then you know he will pull his team out very 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 easily so hey that remains to be seen hopefully you know will this car be you know very very quick this year and I think at the start of the year it will be uh, especially at Melbourne I think you know Haas have kind of got this tendency to start really strong and then kind of drop off as the money fades. I'm As much as I hate to say it, I can see a repeat this year. I think they'll start towards the top of the midfield and I guess the testing times and the way we kind of take the results from testing, we'll, we'll, we'll see if I'm right on this one. But I feel like they'll start really strong, but again, they just won't have the money to really adapt and improve this car. Like, they, like, like, well, like they've always done, really. They've never really been able to have that money and keep it going throughout the whole season. So it is a shame, but I mean, I could be proved wrong. Hopefully I am. So, hey, but the main reason for this video really is to think about what you guys think and, yeah, what are your thoughts on this new Haas car? And the new livery as well. Like I said, it does bring back to those Honda days. I'm really, really liking that livery. So, yeah, let me know down in the comments below. And, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and, of course, subscribe if you do, like, well, yeah, enjoy the video. 
Obviously, I'll have all the other car launches out as well over the next couple of weeks and some review and testing as well. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.